Uh, so hi Aaron, I'm Dan and I'm an iOS developer. It, it actually sounds like a greeting in a, in a, a meeting, uh, but uh, actually I do believe that iOS development or development of any of, of any kind uh, could be an addiction and I'm sure uh, you all are familiar with it. So uh, our today's topic is uh, flow coordinators in iOS. Uh, as I'm an iOS developer, uh, I'm going to discuss this pattern on iOS, but I'm pretty sure we can do that in Android as well. So let's move on to today's agenda. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, talk, uh, uh, talk a little about uh, flow coordinators, coordinators pattern in general terms. Uh, then we will discuss uh, some other patterns uh, with which I'm using this flow coordinators pattern. Uh, then we'll look uh, at, I'm, uh, from now on, I'm going to say FC instead of flow coordinators because it's just, it, because it just easier for me. Then we are going to look how it's uh, in usage. Uh, also, I have uh, this small example of uh, iOS app, which I use, this, which is using this, uh, approach with FC and VVM and uh, factory patterns, and then we'll have a Q&A session. Uh, okay, and also just FYI, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to stop me at any time and ask them. Okay, so uh, I came across uh, like uh, a lot of different names for this pattern, like coordinator, directors, application controller, and flow coordinators, but the most common is flow coordinators. And I'm going to use it, but feel free to use it uh, however you like it. So what is flow coordinator? Uh, flow coordinator is a pattern where you move all of your navigation logic uh, from, view from view controllers modulus to uh, classes which are responsible for apps flow. It's just like a basic, uh, just a basic uh, definition of flow coordinators. Uh, so I'm not, uh, I'm not going to bore you with some uh, additional boring stuff, and we'll just uh, look what problems uh, FC solve. Uh, so I'm, I managed to underline like three uh, key problems uh, which Xcode projects are facing, like overstuff app delegate. Uh, where you have like too much uh, code in this uh, app delegate and too much responsibility and some additional logic, for example, checking if user has logged in or not, and it, it shouldn't be at, at uh, apps delegate, it should be somewhere else, but where, and we'll discuss that. And uh, the second problem we have here is too many responsibilities for view controller. Uh, so what uh, I'm trying to achieve with this FC pattern, I'm trying to uh, let view controllers do his job and that's it. So uh, view controllers shouldn't know what uh, was before, before it and what could be after it. It just has a job and it should do it well. And the third one is smooth flow uh, with uh, some other design patterns. It's, uh, it's really hard to track flow uh, for an app because um, uh, when you have like uh, 25 or 30 screens in the app and uh, I think it's, uh, this flow should be uh, contained in, in few classes than uh, uh, in uh, too many modules and too many view controllers. Uh, it's just easier to use. Okay, so uh, I'm using this flow coordinators pattern with MVVM and factory because it just uh, has all necessary files and it doesn't have too much files in it and it's really easy to use. And uh, I'm sure that many of you are familiar with MVVM pattern where you have view model and model. Uh, and view controller, of course, and uh, yeah, that's, that's what we are going to do here. And also, I'm using this factory pattern for uh, returning view models object and view controllers as well. Uh, yeah, so that's it. But we'll look at it more when uh, we're going 
uh, we are going to start looking at implementation. Uh, so here are a few key roles in FC pattern. Uh, as on the top of this list is flow coordinator. Uh, this is a class which are responsible uh, for managing apps flow. It could be divided into some subflows, uh, which could be called child flow coordinators. We always, we always have inside of this flow coordinator, we always have root view controller, which is a view controller we are presenting right now at the current time. And uh, we have some additional classes like UI factory, for returning uh, view controller instances and view models factory for returning view models. And we also have two providers for UI factories and flow coordinators as well. So uh, let's move on. Uh, this is high level diagram for how a coordinator uh, works with uh, two view controllers. So when app is launching, uh, we have our coordinator, which is which is checking for our state if user has uh, logged in or not. If user isn't uh, authenticated, uh, then coordinator is going to present login view controller. And if user uh, is authenticated, uh, then coordinator is going to present home view controller. Uh, uh, and uh, when a user is in login view controller, he of course uh, can log, log in. And if it's successful, he will notify coordinator to do something about it. Like, uh, hey, uh, I'm done, do something about it. And coordinator checks if uh, login was successful. And if so, he will present home view controller. And from home view controller, we can always log out from our app and also notify coordinator about these changes. Uh, so let's start uh, looking at implementation. This is just like a very basic stuff. We'll look uh, closer in an example. Uh, so here we have a base protocol for flow coordinator, uh, which has uh, two main properties, root view controller, uh, which we discussed uh, earlier when we were talking about key roles. Uh, it's a view controller which are responsible for presenting uh, a new screen. So for example, if we had just launched our app, so our view controller is going to be our launch screen. Uh, we have property was for child flow coordinators, uh, which could be empty if there is no child subflows. And we have this method install, which are called after flow coordinator was initialized. And uh, we can check there for some additional uh, states on which our app uh, could decide uh, what screen uh, and what screens are needed to be presented. And also we have uh, here like an extension to this protocol where we implemented two methods for adding and removing child flow coordinator, but I think it's pretty clear here. Okay, uh, so uh, we'll discuss uh, this from the bottom, uh, like we'll start uh, talking about view models factories and we will talk about uh, UI, flow UI's factory and then we'll go to implementation of flow coordinator. Uh, so uh, here we have uh, flow view models factory. Uh, we can uh, put in here some uh, providers like uh, data fetchers, uh, uh, some authentic authenticators, which are, uh, are going to be used in to be models responsible for logging in, logging out, and so on. And here we have uh, methods for creating our view models. Uh, then uh, we are going to take this view models factory and uh, inject it, it inside our flow UIs factory. And uh, here we are defining protocol for uh, where we are listing which methods uh, should have our Flow UI factory. So uh, first two methods here are basic one, like the uh, first one is root view, make a root view controller, which are returning our root view controller. And the second one, it just, I just added it. So it would be much easier to wrap a view controller inside of navigation controller. And here we have uh, some third methods, 
which is called the make some view controller, which is returning some view controller. This is just a test method for you to show how it's done. And here we have implementation of these protocols. And here, uh, as you can see, for method make root view controller, we are returning our launch screen. And for make some view controller, we are returning uh, some view controller with initialized view model from view models factory. Any questions so far? Okay, I think we're good to go uh, next. Uh, so now we have this app flow coordinator, which, uh, which is basically uh, implementation of protocol flow coordinator. Uh, it has uh, two must have properties from uh, its protocol, uh, root view controller and child flow coordinators. And we added UI factory here as well. And uh, here in init, we are initializing everything and setting to our root view controller, uh, our launch screen. And here might be just a bad example because launch screen best, uh, never have this uh, state where it's done and uh, was doing some job. But uh, just for you to see like an, an example of when as, uh, this view controller is done, uh, it is uses uh, this callback on done and notifying uh, flow coordinator to do something about it. And in our case, it's show some view controller. And uh, in this private methods, we are showing this view controller. Uh, here we can as well uh, like show it model uh, push it uh, via navigation controller and so on and so on. And we always can reuse this method, uh, show some view controller from anywhere in, in our app. Uh, so, okay, we are good to go to look at our example. Uh, can everyone see my Xcode? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm going to show you an app. Okay, let's, let's look out from it. Okay, so here we have like a basic app which could describe uh, our FC and VVM and factory patterns. Uh, I did it for my master thesis and it took me like uh, up to 10 hours to do it completely with uh, UI implementation. So uh, it's pretty good, I think. Okay, so here we can choose a phone number. I have predefined phone numbers and uh, confirmation codes for this number. Okay. Okay, here we can put our username like then and continue. So here we have home screen with uh, all uh, votes created by all users. Uh, here we have tabs where we have our posted votes and participated in votes. And here we have settings tab. Uh, everything is pretty basic. Like we can uh, go here, select uh, one of the options, vote. And after we voted, we can see the results. Uh, a database is built uh, on uh, Google Firebase. So it's, everything here is just pretty basic, like demonstration for uh, for you and it was for my master test thesis. So uh, let's now maybe let's just take a look how we can create a new world. Uh, let's put in some title, some description. We can add some options here as well. Create world. Okay, so here we see that we created this vote created by Dan and on my votes we should have, yeah, we see it right now. Uh, okay, so let's uh, dive deep into it and uh, look at our flow coordinators. So in this app, we have uh, one root flow coordinator and we have uh, three uh, child flow coordinators for Every part of our app, we have uh, signing in, we have our flow coordinator, we have profile setup where user can put in his username. In case uh, I've 
um, we could uh, probably merge it with AUS flow, but uh, in case in future, I'm going to add some uh, additional steps to profile setup and it will be easier for me to have it, it, it in separate flow. And we have our home flow coordinator where user is logged in and we have this user object and we can do something about it like show votes and vote actually. Okay, so let's start with uh, UI factory where we have uh, as this like our root uh, flow coordinator, we actually don't, uh, don't need to have there are like a lot of view controllers and everything else. We just have, uh, we just need to have flow coordinators here implemented. But here we have this methods which are returning our launch screen. And inside this flow coordinator, uh, we are setting this uh launch screen to our root view controller and for now we are defining our child flow coordinators like an empty array and we have uh, we are passing uh, here uh, as this uh, our authentication state provider which actually observes uh, all state uh, of our user and in case in changes it is updating our flow so in case a uh, user is retrieving, uh, it's it doing nothing, but we can always add some loading screen here. Uh, in, in case user not uh, authenticated, we are removing all our child flow coordinators. So it's an empty screen. And then we are showing our uh, OS flow uh, when uh, we are creating this OS flow coordinator with our flow coordinators provider. And uh, we are adding it as child flow coordinator. And here we have that our OS flow coordinator has two uh, callbacks, uh, on done and on locked in. On done is notifying uh, flow coordinator, our root flow coordinator that user is locked in successfully. And uh, it should present our uh, profile setup flow. And uh, on locked in is going to say that our user is locked in and already uh, uh, and already set up his profile and there is no need to show the profile setup. You can just show home flow. Okay, and here we go again, uh, checking for state uh, of, of the of authentication of our user. And if user is uh, authenticated and complete, then we are going to show this profile setup flow. And if user is authenticated, we are going to present our home flow. So here we have everything structured uh, very strictly. And I think it's, very, it's pretty clear for everyone how our, how our app is checking for our state and doesn't load any additional screens uh, before uh, we are sure if user is locked in. And now maybe let's just take a look how we are implementing this, uh, how we actually wiring this app flow coordinator in our uh, scene delegate. Okay, so here we, uh, this is uh, like a common setup of Firebase app. Uh, here I'm using uh, for storing like user settings or something like that. I'm using user defaults and uh, I'm defining this URL handler in case uh, it, it will change in future. It will be easier for me to just uh, update it here and, it will, it, and it's gonna work everywhere else. Uh, here I'm initializing all my providers, which are needed for uh, all of my screens, all of my V models actually. And here we have this factories provider. Maybe we'll just take a look at it. Uh, so here we are passing uh, our uh, providers, key value storage handlers and everything else uh, just to pass it on to our uh, view models factories. Uh, and from view models factories, we can pass it on to our view model. So actually we, we are not going to use any singletons here in this project. And uh, we are going to, uh, in series going, uh, there is no need to create a few instances of the same class for providing any, any data. It's just in one place and it passes everywhere. 
and maybe let's just okay we are going to look at view models our view models factory a bit lighter so here we have uh two methods for each uh, flow coordinator like returning uh, ui factory and view models factory okay let's go back to the scene delegate and here we are initializing our flow coordinators provider uh, while we are passing a factories provider and uh, authentication state provider let's take a look at it uh, okay uh, so uh, here we are initializing our uh, root flow coordinator where we are passing our ui factory uh, flow coordinators provider and authentication state provider and here we have a method for creating uh, flow coordinators for each of our flows we have uh, make home flow coordinator where we need to have user for this method to return our home flow coordinator we have method make OS flow coordinator where we are creating this uh, OS flow coordinator and the same we have for profile setup where we pass in this user id and let's go back uh, so uh, here we initialized our uh, root flow coordinator and we are calling this install to check it for updates in uh, our state and right after that we are setting our root view controller to window root view controller and uh, storing this property and making it visible okay and that's it uh, so that's everything you need to set up our flow coordinators and uh, let's we've discussed uh, this flow coordinator and i don't think that there is need maybe to go over every of our flow coordinators child flow coordinators maybe we'll just talk about our os uh, state um, os flow coordinator and home profile stuff is pretty basic uh, let's uh, look uh, on it from view models factory and we would go to the top uh, so here we have this view model where we are passing our authenticator uh, fire store and key value storage for storing some additional keys inside our phone code view model and here we are initializing the, these two view models and passing every, everything that is needed to them and here you can notice that we're using the same authenticator uh in both places and uh, therefore we don't need any singletons and any additional uh instances of this authenticator and maybe i'll just like a, just a quick look on this authenticator uh where we have uh this protocol okay uh so uh i've divided this authenticator on a few uh, separate protocols which is uh which has its definition every uh, every one of it like we have this, this authentication user deletion provider which this whole responsibility is only for deleting user uh the same as lohout and uh we have our authenticator which could authenticate user with phone number and confirm confirm authentication and also recent uh code in case uh, our previous code is uh, get lost got lost uh let's move on to our flow ui factory here we have a protocol defining which methods are needed in this protocol we are in this flow we have three screens uh phone number view controller where we are putting in our number uh, we have phone code view controller where we are putting in uh, confirmation code from sms and we have this countries view controller uh, which is presenting a list of countries where we could pick a country where we're from and it will tell us our phone code and uh, here we have uh, this uh, methods. Uh, first one is for uh, embedding in root view controller inside of UI navigation controller. And uh, next uh, two methods, it's uh, for uh, 
creating view model instance uh, via view models factory and putting in it in our view controller. And the third one is a method for creating our contrast view controller, but uh, I've used a library which I found on GitHub. So it doesn't have a view model, but it was very easy to use. And here we have the source flow coordinator where we have a UI factory, a root view controller, child flow coordinators, uh, our state provider, and these two closures uh, when, you, when, log, uh, when login in is done and our user is just logged in and uh, don't need uh, any additional profile setup. Uh, so here we are initializing uh, our root view controller with uh, this phone number view controller, which is first view controller we need to present in order to for user to log in with his one phone number. And here we have these two uh, callbacks when uh, user when uh, login when user put his number uh, and it was successfully and. Uh, uh, send request for sending this confirmation code to his phone number is success. And we are letting uh, our flow coordinator know about this. And then flow coordinator decides, decides uh, this to show our phone code view controller. And the next one is when a user is pressing on this countries button and we should present this countries view controller with all the possible countries where there are codes. And we are doing this here. Uh, also, we have this uh, up update for current authentication state. Uh, in case uh, we have we had some troubles with internet and we couldn't fetch our uh, host state at. Uh, up flow coordinator, which is our root flow coordinator, and we're just double checking it. And here we are presenting this uh, screens, and we have some error handling message right here. Uh, so maybe we just look at this one. Here we are uh, we are uh, creating this phone code view controller, uh, and if user presses cancel on it, then or just taps back, we can just uh, pop view controller right here. So uh, our phone code view controller uh, even doesn't know how uh, what should what should happen once the cancel button was pressed. So this is our host flow coordinator, and maybe let's take a look at our home flow coordinator. Uh, once again, let's start looking from uh, view models factory and then go up. Uh, we have here all the providers that are necessary to our view models. We have settings view model, my votes view model, home view model, create vote view model, and so on. Uh, so for settings, we are passing a lot of providers like and also a URL handler, so how it provider, user deletion provider, and so on. Uh, inside uh, of our home flow UI factory, we have this protocol, which is returning all the screens which are necessary in our uh, home flow coordinator. And uh, notice that uh, here root view controller is a tab bar controller, because uh, in our app, we have this tab bar on, on the bottom. Uh, we have injecting our view models here. Uh, this is returning root view controller, and we have implementation of returning all other view controllers here as well. And uh, this is our home flow coordinator, which has uh, all the same properties, but also it has this user instance for locked in user. Uh, we are initializing uh, our tab bar here. We are adding this uh, screens to our SV controllers to our tab view controller. And here we are uh, we are checking for an updates from our view controller, like uh, uh, create vote or, or open vote. And please notice here that we have uh, 
um, calling show vote view controller from two places here from home view controller and my votes view controller because uh, basically whenever we open vote we just need to vote or just need to tap a button to see a result so uh, we can uh, reuse the screen and it's pretty easy to reuse because we have it implemented in just one method uh, and that's it so it looks pretty simple to me, to me. and uh, also if for example you you need uh, to fetch an image and maybe edit it and add some additional steps. Uh, you can always create like an additional flow just for that, where you will have like image picker and then some image editing screens, and it put in this flow on done would pass uh, uh, and would pass uh, to whoever called in, uh, pass an image, and we are ready to use it. Uh, so that's it for an example. Uh, maybe you have some questions here. Mm, actually, uh, I can. Uh, I have one question. Okay. Uh, cool. But uh, not to this functionality, uh, but mm -hmm. to the main idea of the app. Okay. It's your task or it's your pet project and uh, you have yeah, some... Yeah, uh, when I was uh, studying like on the uh, on Bacalaur, uh, as well as Bacalaur, I've developed this, uh, actually developed another app, which uh, purpose was to create a vault uh, for everyone to see and everyone to use it. But uh, I'm now uh, I'm, I'm getting my master's diploma and I have... Uh, my master's uh, diploma review in uh, one week. So I did this app which has uh, an AS encryption. So all votes are encrypted with uh, 128 bit key and stored at Firebase and uh, users uh, users identity also is encrypted but with private key generated after successful login and stored only in phone's memory. So uh, uh database even doesn't know uh, anything about our users and also whenever users decided to just vote he could just press this and this and after he votes successfully uh counts number on this option is going to increment a database and uh, it doesn't store who exactly voted for this uh, vote Yes, yeah, so basically it was my task to do this app. Does this answer your question? Um, yeah, from my point of view, uh, but actually, so you can also add some participant, yes, and uh, just like uh, create some uh, an action like uh, I have a birthday uh, tomorrow, so mm -hmm. Uh, vote for some option like uh, go to the bar or go to the park or go to yeah, some yeah, next yeah. place. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, okay. Uh, what is your name? Nazar. Okay. Let's put in like Nazar's Thursday, and we could uh, let's decide where should we go. Yeah, and let's put put in some options and um, bear uh, maybe your friends just want to go to the library and maybe we can just uh, add another one uh, like uh, sit at home okay and we can create our vote and we have this vote uh, right here and uh, as we created we also are able to vote and any other users also is created to also is able to vote, but uh, in future I was supposed to add this like a limited to users vote where we can create either public or either private votes. Uh, in private uh, votes, we, uh, we will just have this share button here where we can uh, send this to our friends or our group chat and with Firebase dynamic link support, we can just uh, parse that link and 
uh, or when user process on this link will just be taken to this specific vote in the app. So yeah, we can just always do that. Okay, great. It looks useful. Yeah, not all stuff for the university is useful, so I got you. Uh, does anyone else have yeah, yeah, I have a, uh, I have a one question. Do you have uh, any tests for, for this application? Uh, no, I haven't because I don't, because uh, I'm like full-time worker, I'm full-time mm -hmm. dad, and I also have, I'm, I'm also working in a uh, Danish startup. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, see, my schedule is pretty rough, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, ac actually I would love to add some unit tests here in the future as well, if I'm going to continue working on this project, because uh, I'm strong believer that every app, uh, every code uh, should be covered with unit tests. Uh, even if you have some more time with UI tests. Mm -hmm. uh, and in so and Star, I'm working in healthcare. Mm -hmm. And there are very high requirements for code coverage. Like we have right, right. this code coverage requirement. So uh, for... going back to, okay. to this uh, coordinator, how, how good is coordinator for uh, for writing uh, tests around its uh, concepts, its classes that are involved? Okay. Uh, so here uh, we actually we can put in some uh, unit uh, unit test cases. Or I think we can put we can test entire apps flow. We can just uh, check if, for example, if uh, our OS flow coordinator is done. If uh, then after, right after that, if we are going to present our profile setup, so if everything is working correctly, and we can test if inside of this flow coordinator, if everything uh, is opening up when it's supposed to, like when we are pressing on countries button on login screen, if we are presenting uh, our, uh, if we are presenting our countries view controller, and uh, we also, we also able uh, to test all our models here, all our providers and uh, in case it wouldn't be enough, we can test even more. But every every but every bit of business logic is put in in our providers. Okay, I see. Thanks. That that's all from my side. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, maybe I'll see just here because I have uh, as a slide. For Q and A session, and if anyone uh, has follow up questions, feel free to contact me at my emails.